President Idi Amin died in exile at 985 Bed King Faisal Specialist Hospital in Saudi Arabia. His life, especially the years leading up to his exile and his time spent in foreign land, revealed a narrative of military progress, political intrusion, and personal drama that extend far beyond the typical accounts of his rule. Early life and military career, Idi Amin was born around at, at around 1925 in Koboku, a region in West Nile district of Uganda. A carbon date test conducted in two, two, 2003, however, estimated his birth year to be 1928. Amin joined the King, Rifle, King, King Africa Rifle Army, British Colonial Army, in 1946. His career took him to various fronts, including Burma, Somalia, and Kenya, where his combat skill and physical strength earned him a rapid promotion by 1964, shortly after Uganda gained independence, Amin achieved the rank of major. Raised to power, Amin closed association with Milton Obote played a crucial role in his accent to power. Amin was instrumental in 1996 coup that brought Obote to power. However, the relationship between Idi Amin and Obote deteriorated, culminating in Amin's overthrowing Obote in a coup of January 25, 1971. Amin declared himself the president of Uganda and immediately began to consolidate his power, often through violent and repressive means. Presidency and brutality, Amin regime, which lasted from 1971 to 1979, was characterized by extreme brutality, political repression, and economic mismanagement. His notorious public safety unit and state research bureau were responsible for the death of estimated 300,000 Ugandans. Amin decided to expel the Asian community from Uganda in 1972, claiming their asset, asset and businesses for, for state led to economic chaos and significant down, downturn in Uganda's commercial activities, Uganda, Tanzania war and the exile. Amin Aggressive expansionist policy led to the ill-fated invasion of Uganda in, 1970, in 1978. Aiming to annex Kagera region, the Tanzania Army under President Julius Nyerere launched a counter-offensive that culminated in Uganda's Tanzania War. By April 1979, Tanzanian forces and, and Uganda exile formed the Uganda National Liberation Army, UNLA and were advancing on Kampala. On April 11, 1979, as Tanzania forces closed in, Amin conveyed a crisis meeting at the East Residency in Munyonyo. Atten attendees included Major, Lu Major Luca Yuma, head of the Presidential Strike Force, Captain Asio, head of Signals, Sergeant Yosa, the head of operation in the State Research Bureau. It was decided that Amin would fly out of the country, armed with a machine pistol named K Kayalani, a gift from Yasser Harafat, Amin left in a two-door Mercedes-Benz 208-280CE. His convoy included several vehicles, among the, the Mercedes-Benz 280SLE model, driven by Sergeant George William Cabrera and Sergeant Abbas Moroto. Sergeant Eriko Andera drove a white Land Rover serving as the communication vehicle with Captain Asio aboard. Journey to Arua and escape from Uganda on April 11, 1979. With Tanzania forces and the Uganda National Liberation Army advancing on Kampala, Idi Amin convened a crisis meeting in the second floor launch of his three-story residence at Cape Town View, Munyonyo. President, the president, as mentioned before, it was clear that the defeat was imminent. And the decision was made for Amin to flee the country. Preparation for exile. Preparation for exile. Amin, with other uh, other guests who, who are at the house, suggested that they should leave the country immediately through Arua. Amin took the co driver seat with these two Mercedes Benz. And distinctive, uh, distinctive for his black bonnet and top with grey sides. <coughs> Adan drove a white. Drove, Adan drove a mean while Sergeant Kivumbi, a mean signaler, sat behind him. The convoy included several escort vehicles, two Mercedes Benz, as mentioned before, models driven by William Cabrera and Sergeant Abbas Morota.
with Captain Asio also was on board managing the Amin communication. The journey maneuver through Mutachazi, Mukwano Road and on to Jinja Road at Lugogo with Amin receiving situational update from Captain Musamir Amule. Upon reaching Owens Fall Dam in Jinja, they encountered Lieutenant Colonel Butabika, the instigator of the march of the North internal strife, in a jeep armed with 106 mm recoils gun. Amin lingered at the Owen Falls Dam, awaiting word from Kenyan authority regarding the fuel supplies through Busia and Malaba. When it became clear that to them that there was no help, the convoy pressed through the regions of Teso, Lango, and Acholi, where they faced militia hostility. These skirmishes show Amin escort responding with gunfire to clear the path, arrival in Arua. Ultimately, Amin reached Arua to, to a grand reception, marked by celebratory gunfire. He headed straight to his three-bedroom house at the Tanganyika near the Arua airstrip. There, he held meeting with his educational minister, Brigadier Barnabas Kili, appointing him at, at acting president before his final departure. On April 23, 1979, Amin and his wife Samzam Abidia, whom he married while still president and a Russian military attach, left her aboard C-130 plane, life in Libya and subsequent moves in Libya. Amin was well welcomed by Gaddafi II in command before moving to Medina al Sihaya in Tripoli, where he reunited with his 35 children and his wife Sarah Kyoloba who had left Uganda in March 1979. The stay in Libya was short-lived, and on July 16, 1979, Amin received a call from his wife Madina in Iraq, informing him of his relocation to Central African Republic following Saddam Hussein's race to power. Amin made a public appearance on September 1, 1979, during Gaddafi Liberation Day celebration in Libya. By September 20, 1979, Madina relocated to Paris with Bokosa wife Catherine after a coup in the Central Republic of Republic. Madina later moved to Zaire with her son Abdul Hassan Mwanga, where Mobutu Hofa had resident in Mbins. Transition to Saudi Arabia. Gaddafi eventually moved Amin and his family to an isolated area in Medina al Kahum near the Tunisian border. Unhappy with the isolation, Amin sought asylum in Saudi Arabia. Following the November 20th, following November to 20th, uh, uh, 20th following November 20th to December of 1979, the extremists led by Juhayaman al Watabi attacked the Great Mosque of Mecca. Amin's request was granted. In uh, Saudi Arabia, Amin was received by Prince Turki bin Faisal Hal bin Saudi and given curry like limousine. He lived in Sa Sun's Hotel in Jeddah, drawing a regular upkeep of 30,000 US dollars from Citibank and Arab Bank in Jordan. His drivers included Abu Bakr, Kenya, and Abu Bakr, Konda, a Pakistani friend in Swahili. Personal life and continued political engagement. 19 83. I mean, separated from Sarah Kyo by found solace in Fred Kigos in 1976 song, Uganda song, Sarah Andre Sewo, and later married Sawuya Leila Asalai Kabeja Kigundi in a ceremony presided over by Sheikh Sarif Abu Alama. With his new wife, I mean, maintained a routine of weekly visit to Macarona Saloon in Jeddah for haircut and hair dyeing. He enjoyed dancing to rock and roll music. Despite his exile, Amin kept a keen eye interest in Ugandan politics, receiving newspaper cuttings and updates from his former security aide, Major Luka Yuma in Kenya. He even attempted to reconcile with Obote, liberating his familial ties through his former wife Ellen Echi, who was Obotenese. Yes, Arafat frequently visited Amin after 1982 when the PLO headquarters moved to Tunisia. Amin occasionally traveled outside Saudi Arabia, including trips to Hong Kong, Jordan, and a visit to Zaire in 1989 with his son Isa Aliga. His health declined 
and began to deteriorate significantly in the early 2000. By 2001, he weighed, he weighed over 200 kgs and his condition of hypertension and diabetes worsened. He was a frequent visitor of the, of the King Fahad Hamid Forces Hospital in, for treatment. In July 2003, Amin Health took a turn for worse. He was admitted to King Fasel Specialist Hospital. Surrounded by his children, Imam, Chumaru, Katu Moga, Mwanga, Lumumba, Mao, Maimuna, and Rajab, as well as friends, Brigadier Basir Juma, and a former minister, Ismail Sebi, Amin slipped into coma on July 18, 2003. He delivered his final message in Swahili to ex approximately 60 children from 21 mothers, urging them to love each other and remain united. Amin passed away on August 16, 2003, at around 7 a.m. His body was prepared for burial by Prince bin Abdullah Aziz, and was later laid to rest at Rumais Cemetery in the same evening, with around 300 mourners in attendance. Legacy our main legacy remains continuous since in Uganda history. Its regime, brutality, its eccentric personality, and social economic upfields of his rule have left an indelible mark on the nation. His years in exile, marked by relative comfort and continued political engagement, contrast to supply with chaos and suffering that characterize his time in power. Our main life serves as a powerful reminder of the complexity of political power and the far-reaching impact of authoritarian rule. His story continues to evoke strong emotions and debate, highlighting the enduring scars and lessons from his controversial presidency. Thank you for listening. Kindly guys, please subscribe and share for more videos like this. Thank you.